Hello and welcome back to Current State on the channel EZ64. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is the show where I talk about all things Nintendo and where I think they should go in the future based on my own thoughts and what they're doing now and what they've done in the past. And in this episode, I'm going to go in depth on why 2015 was really the year of disappointment for Nintendo fans. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, I played a lot of awesome games um, from Nintendo in that year. And that is true. A lot of great games came out. But there was also a lot of crushing disappointment in a lot of different aspects in 2015. And I'm also going to talk about, since this is coming out pretty early in 2016, how I think they can sort of remedy that for the near future. And I think they're going to with like new releases like Pokémon Tournament that are really like out there and different and cool. Should we call me Tensei Cross Fire Emblem, possibly Pikmin 4, Star Fox Zero, Zelda Wii U. Um, they really, for, at least for the Wii U, they seem to be going like all out um, for the Wii U's like closing year, their closing time. 3DS, on the other hand, we have like Paper Jam and Federation Force and um, Fire Emblem Face, which looks amazing, but basically looks like another awakening, sort of like taking what Fire Emblem has always been and sort of like piling it into one experience, which is good, but I'm not so sure about Paper Jam and Federation Force, honestly, but we'll talk about that later, possibly. Um, but what I'm going to go into now is why 2015 is was so disappointing for Nintendo fans. It was disappointing for me a lot, in a lot of different ways. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. The worst part of 2015 for Nintendo fans was obviously the passing of Satoru Iwata, president and CEO of Nintendo of Japan. Um, that was a crushing, crushing, crushing blow in the middle of the summer. Um, it, it really was. I was at summer camp at the time of his passing, so I didn't find out that he had died until like a week after it actually happened. And uh, I was just sort of in disbelief, and then I was extremely sad. <laughs> I, I actually made a video of tribute of a bunch of fan art to Satoru Iwata. That's on this channel. You can watch that if you'd like. Have some feels for the past president. Um, with some Nintendo music in the background, so you can watch that if you'd like. Um, there are so many tributes of him because he was so well loved by the Nintendo fans because he was more than just a corporate face. You could see that in his Nintendo Directs, his Awata Ask interviews, all of the things that made him an awesome guy as well as an awesome visionary. Without him, we wouldn't have the motion control or the touchscreen control. We wouldn't have the Wii or the DS. We wouldn't have the amazing games that he helped executive produce or develop. I mean, he was the executive producer of all titles through a lot of our childhoods from like 2002 through 2015. That's insane. That's th Those are so many games. And he helped make all of those possible through being a committed, amazing businessman. But he was more than that too. He started as a game developer. He helped make games possible, like Super Smash Bros. Melee as a release title for the GameCube, um, Earthbound to even work properly, Pokemon Gold and Silver to be the most jam-packed Pokemon game in terms of content, and he helped get the Kirby series on its feet. He single-handedly made Balloon Fight, pretty much. He just he had such a crucial part in Nintendo in pretty much every aspect, and he really was a gamer. And he was also like a distant family member that we felt like he just did things for us because he wanted gaming to be for everyone. He wanted everyone to have fun. So that's that's obviously the worst disappointment of 2015 was that cancer took his life way too early. And man, that was that was that was rough. I mean, I definitely cried multiple times. I don't know if I would even do that for any other celebrity or. Or famous person. But when I kept thinking about it, Satoru Wada was someone who really impacted my life. I changed it, probably. Like, I wouldn't be the same person that, uh, without him. Without his existence. That's crazy. That's a man who lives halfway, all the way, on the other side of the world. Um, him have that great of an impact on your life. And he really did. That's crazy. 
he impacted people's lives all around the world and there are obviously a lot of people who do that but for it to be through a medium such as video gaming something that some of us love to do more than like anything else in the entire world it's just really special and uh, he'll be missed so much so much Whew. and now I want now I'm going to feel uh, like really really bad um, bad talking Nintendo because I too was disappointed with E3 2015 I guess we'll talk about that first um, but then like like a month later when Satoru Wada died I was like wow we're like a bunch of douchebags we were just complaining about E3 and Nintendo's presence at it and how it paled in comparison to Sony and um, we didn't think about the people you don't think about the people behind it a whole lot and then that of course happened a month after that so I'm sure a lot of us felt bad about ragging on Nintendo for having a poor E3 um, that being said I do think they had a very poor E3 showing in 2015 probably their worst um, man in a long long time I guess probably their worst since 2008, I would like to say. So I don't feel like much came out in 2009. These are from Marvel's Wii, I guess. But So anyway, it, like I can't even remember. So it's been a long time since they've had that bad of an E3. Um, 2012 I didn't really like either. Because while they did reveal the Wii U, there weren't many games for the launch of that. Um, so 2013, 2014, I thought were pretty strong years um, for Nintendo at E3. But in 2015, and I made a whole podcast on this channel, by the way, too. You can, you can watch that. I believe that's episode nine of Easy Podcast. Yeah, I think so. So you can check that out if you'd like. Um, I go more in depth about Nintendo and being disappointed with them in general in 2015 on, on that video. But yeah, basically. What we wanted from Nintendo was like really not what we got. We wanted Zelda Wii U information. Instead, we got Triforce Heroes, which is a great game, but it's not what we wanted for the majority. We wanted Animal Crossing Wii U, but we got a knockoff board game, Mario Party-esque title. And we got another spinoff for Animal Crossing 2, but no new main series entry in the franchise. We wanted Metroid to come back in all of its glory because it's been gone for half a decade and then they give us Federation Force where you play as nameless Galactic Federation troopers that are chibi for some reason in the Metroid universe. There were so many things that just didn't make sense in their conference. One of their highlights was cross-promotion with Skylanders, which I'm sure is fun. I haven't played it myself, but that's not E3 material. That's like... April Nintendo Direct material and they put it on this great stage. Honestly, there were Nintendo Directs in 2015 that I was more impressed with than E3. That shouldn't be the case. E3 is also another Nintendo Direct, but it should be the biggest, most amazing one. And then they had Paper Jam when we want a new Paper Mario game, but instead we're getting Sticker Star Paper Mario in the Mario and Luigi universe in a generic world, which isn't, which isn't traditional for Mario and Luigi games. They seem to be going down this sort of cut and paste, play it safe route with their games in 2015, which I think is sort of turning around with 2016, not only with the games that are coming out this year, but with the promise that's in the NX system, the mobile market of new Nintendo games, and the theme parks and the opening and expanding of their IP, hopefully into movies and TV shows and merchandise and stuff like that. So I think Nintendo is about to have a revolution, just like they did a decade ago with the Wii. I mean, they had their off console with the Wii U, just like the GameCube was probably considered an off console. GameCube had more games, though, than the Wii U. And part of that is due to 2015 being sort of a lackluster year. And the, like, the exceptions to 2015 being disappointing mainly rely in two games. Those two games are Splatoon and Super Mario Maker. And I think most people would probably agree with me on that. Splatoon was probably loved by everyone. It really was. It was a universally well-received new IP from Nintendo that we don't get all that often. And it was also a new type of gameplay. It was third-person shooting with its own unique little twist and flair that had single-player that was pretty awesome. 
a lot of weapons, amazing online multiplayer, probably Nintendo's best foray into that department for sure. Um, it's just a really, really fun game. It has its own identity, and it's so great. I mean, Splatoon is awesome, and I played that like all summer. It's incredible. Splatoon was great, and Super Mario Maker was also very great. It innovated 2D Mario platforming, even though they've probably done everything with it that they can, which is sort of evident by the new Super Mario Brothers series being the same thing over and over again, but with Super Mario Maker, they took four different Mario styles and let people create and share their own levels, and then everyone can play them, and it's been a great thing online. It's That was genius, and it can, still continues to be genius. But other than those two games, the games of 2015 never really stood out to me. Even if I really loved them, like Triforce Heroes or Yoshi's Woolly World, those were just sort of safe games to produce and sell. Triforce Heroes uses the same engine as A Link Between Worlds, and it tries to take the sort of niche Four Swords experience, make it mainstream, which they did with online, and um, easier access to play, but they sort of cut out the soul of Zelda, they didn't really need to have a great story, they didn't have an open world, it's just a bunch of levels that you get to play and have fun. And that's what it is, it's great fun, but it's not really that whole experience that most people want in a true Zelda game. And it's fine, because we're going to have Zelda games like that. And it's still a great game, on its own merits, but it can't be compared to a game like, even A Link Between Worlds, or Skyward Sword, like some of the recent Zelda games. Definitely not. And then Yoshi's Woolly World was basically taking the aesthetic of Kirby's Epic Yarn, which was a very different game, and sort of just adding Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Story formula to that. And it's a beautiful game, but it's just another 2D platformer from Nintendo. I mean, I think making Chibi Robo a 2D platformer killed that character's chances at being a big thing and sort of having his own identity again, because I love the original Chibi Robo game. It was so different and fun and quirky. And to sort of dull that character down and that character's world down to a 2D platformer was a big mistake. I really think so. I don't know. I don't know if Chibi Robo's gonna come back because of a game like that that was not necessarily bad, but just not, not at all what should have happened, I feel. And then you have other games like Mario Party 10, which just goes to show that sometimes Nintendo just doesn't care about feedback. All the reviewers said that Mario Party 9 was very, very wrong for doing the cart mechanic. Because you couldn't strategize, you couldn't play on your own terms, you were just sort of riding along this linear path and having stuff happen that didn't really matter in the end, and you would play mini games. And then Mario Party 10 had a bunch of generic mini games to supplement the very boring, very unengaging gameplay of Mario Party 10 that was just riding around on a board, and even Amiibo Party wasn't that great. Putting the Amiibo on the gamepad every time you have to take a turn, that's not fun. There was very little fun that I found in Mario Party 10, and I played it a few times, and that's it. I don't even think I've played every single board in that game. There's only five. And I, and I don't think I've played them all yet, because it was so not interesting. It was so disappointing. Like, I love Mario Party 1 through 7. 1 through 8, honestly. But the the company that's producing those Mario Party games right now, they just, they don't get it. They don't know how to make a party game. That's, it's not just luck. It has to be part skill, too. So that was very disappointing to see that Nintendo and, um, Q, what's the company? Q Game? No. Ah, uh, forget what the company's name um, is. But it just goes to show that they haven't learned from those mistakes. They're still staying in that same rut that nobody likes. So that was disappointing for Mario Party 10. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse was a nice title that came out in February. But um, that was originally... Wait. I don't know if that was originally going to be in 2014. I don't know. But it was a good title. It was a good, nice budget title. Sort of like Captain Toad was. Um, but it was nothing mind-blowing at all. And then... Another disappointing thing in terms of Nintendo was their very, very, just bad holiday season. We had Xenoblade Chronicles X, which was great, 
but not everybody, not many, are interested in that t sort of game. But for the people who are, they loved it, and of course they would, because it's a great game and a great overall experience. But looking at the month of November, where they usually have their biggest titles come out in that second to last weekend of November, I mean, think about it. In 2013, they had Super Mario 3D World and The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. Both, some would say masterpieces, both pretty much technically perfect games that play incredibly well and are just super, super fun and awesome. And then 2014, you had Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and the Pokemon remakes of Sapphire and Ruby being Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. So in 2013, you had Mario and Zelda main series, hardcore handling both the console and handheld markets. That's a way to do your November Nintendo. 2014, they some would argue they did it even better with Smash and Pokemon. Again, covering the Wii U and the 3DS. And then in 2015, man, they were originally going to have Star Fox Zero, which would have been a really good um, title for the Wii U. They would have held down that Wii U market, not necessarily with as popular a franchise, but I think more people would have been open to jumping into Star Fox saying like, oh, this is their new big title? Let's get this. I mean, why not? Um, and then some people might recognize Star Fox from their childhood and be like, oh, okay, this makes sense that this is the AAA Nintendo title. You know, they can't have Smash every year, obviously. They can't have Mario or Zelda every year, even though they pretty much do have Mario every year. But that's besides the point. And then the 3DS, yeah, they were going to have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Super Mystery Dungeon, and I think that still came out. But that's not the Pokemon anyone wants. People want Pokemon Z or the 7th Gen. Um, I mean, it's, again, all respect to those games, I just don't really get into them that much. But uh, I, that's not the big blockbuster title that should be coming out um, on November 20th. And then, instead of Star Fox Zero, they had Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, which is such a disappointing game. I don't know what Nintendo was thinking, or if they did, or if, if Camelot had any of their own input. Because Camelot is usually very creative with their sports games. So, it doesn't make sense to me why Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is one of the most generic Mario experiences out there, period. The only thing that's great about it is like, oh, it's HD. But if you want to play a fun Mario Tennis game, I suggest Mario Power Tennis for the GameCube. I mean, it basically had everything the Wii U game has, and a lot more. It's created by the same developer, but it has more characters, more courts, more interesting gimmicks, more modes of play. Um, yeah, really more everything. Obviously, it didn't have online back in that day, but I don't know. If you want to have good local play, or a good single player experience with Mario Tennis, or a sports game in general, Definitely go the Mario Power Tennis route. Pick that game off of eBay or something. Or even the original Tennis for N64. Man, it, it really does seem like Ultra Smash was a game that was made in like a f six months? Five months? <laughs> like, you have generic texture swaps for different chords. You don't have many characters. They're all the same Mario characters that you know are going to be in every single Mario sports and or kart game at this point. So there's no anticipation for the characters. The gameplay is pretty much exactly the same. I mean, it's the same button pressing of the whole tennis thing. It's, it's been done a lot. It's been done many times. It's been done the N64, the GameCube, the 3DS, and now the Wii U. And tennis itself had been done on um, Wii Sports and everything like that, too. This game doesn't really have a reason to exist, I feel like, except for that Nintendo's sort of, like, selling out for this particular title. They're just trying to make a buck. They tried to make something, whip it up together quickly, just so that they could have something for the holiday season of 2015. And it wasn't much of anything. I don't really get it. And the whole Mega Mushrooms being, like, the key selling point for that game... It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's just randomization of items. Like, how is that fun? How is their strategy to that? There were item boxes in the, um, the Mario Power Tennis, and you would get different items and power-ups, and there were different special moves, but they all made sense, and you had to, like, earn them, and then that's how you would sort of turn the tables on your opponent. It was, it was more strategy. 
more skill required. I feel like Nintendo is trying to play to a dumbed down audience nowadays. So I don't know. Nintendo does too much hand holding in general. They do too much. Hey, do you want to take a break? Like, no. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. I respect Nintendo for the decisions they make, and I, I understand why they put a lot of what they do. And I'm more open to like a lot of things that they do. For instance, like putting a super guide or a easy mode in 2D platformers. I get it. I mean, every video game is somebody's first game, right? As long as it's optional, I don't really care. But there are some things, like some games in general, like Amiibo Festival, which is just really sort of a cash grab to like put Animal Crossing characters on a board game and say, hey, this is a th big new thing, and like the average consumer is just be like, oh, okay, I'll buy these Amiibos too. And like while I love Amiibo, man, they're they're making they're making their fill on those, so it's pretty crazy. So I feel like most of the games were just very generic and expected from Nintendo. Even if they were good, they were still sort of disappointing because they weren't mind-blowing like Nintendo games usually are. They were very playing it safe in 2015. And playing it safe even led to a few of those games, like I said, Tennis, Amiibo Festival, Mario Party 10, being just downright not fun at all. Really not. I mean, if you're getting enjoyment out of those games, more power to you. It's better to like m more things, but if I want to honestly like them, and uh, I definitely didn't for a few of Nintendo's titles. So with their announcements, their promise of so many things that didn't come in 2015 and what did come out in 2015 wasn't enough to satiate our appetites, that's why 2015 was such a disappointing year for Nintendo. And um, in regards to Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, I'm going to talk more about that in the next episode, sort of a subject surrounding Mario in general, so definitely look out for that. Thank you so much for watching. A little longer episode this time, but I really hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.